realize the first recording I tried did not work. Well, it worked, but there was no sound. So we're going to run through this really quick again. Just from the very home page, one place that you can create bug items or even test cases, product backlog items, tasks that need to be done, really anything. It's right here on the home screen. I've already created one, we'll just go ahead and create test bug report too. So from right here we can just create that bug. Right here we've got reproduction steps. We can include instructions on how to reproduce that bug. What caused it to happen and stuff. What your test case was. If you want, you could submit your test case as an attachment or maybe you want to include a screenshot. You can add that stuff here with the bug report. System info really isn't quite pertinent to us. That just has to do with kind of your OS, what hardware and such, but all of our stuff's pretty, pretty generic and basic, so we don't need to worry about that so much. I've been using acceptance criteria as more of a place to write out how things should be working, though I know some people use it as a way to communicate, but we have a discussion area here, so I didn't think this could be used more for how it should perform and the discussion to be used for going back and forth between the person who created the bug report and the person who's, who's working on the bug and such. Related work here, if we know what change set <coughs> the bug was introduced in, I would link it here. Development, I would link work that's being done on that bug. <coughs> Um, and then most of the rest of this can just be left for whoever the team leader is at the time to fill out deciding what the severity of the bug is, what the priority of it is, um, assigning it out and stuff. So we'll just save that. Now if we come into work, <coughs> here we just get a generic backlog view of all of the items. You can see we've got our bug reports here. Let's go ahead and just move those to Sprint 2 though. Probably they're not still hanging out here. Actually, we'll just delete that one. We don't have a random one, so we delete that one so we don't need it. Here in Sprint 2 though, you can see we have a few things in here that need to be done. Um, some of the stuff I've just created, that way we have dummy data. Um, so this shows kind of what there is to do, who it's assigned to and such. If you come over to board, you get a little bit different view of it. It's really kind of nice. So you've got, you see what needs to be done, what things are in progress, what things have been finished, when you start breaking this all down. If we come into this bug report, um, I just assign myself to it, why not? Decide that that's a pretty high bug, probably really needs to be worked on some. Um, <coughs> let's see, how's this? Oh, that's really nice right there. Queries, oh no, that's the one. Oh, come back. So, queries. Queries is kind of nice, I don't use it enough. Um, but if you come right into queries, and these work here. You can just click assign to me and you can really easily see what things are assigned to you and you can probably change how those are filtered probably by severity and stuff, how badly they need to be worked on and stuff, what things really need to be done first. Um, it's the same page. I'm going to show you some of that already. So that's the most of how you work around in here. Uh, if I just go ahead and open up this backlog item, I can see that I had a few tasks under it. Let's go ahead and open up one of these tasks. <coughs> so in this task, you can see we've got um, welcome slash program description, basically just having the text file that when they launch the application, it kind of just tells them what to do and such. So that was in change set 16, I added that. Having all this linked up, it's a real nice because then I can just open up the change set and all of this came here and you can see easily what changes were made, what code was added, what code was removed, what files were added and such. 
makes it really nice. Something else I'll show you are shelf sets. Um, I don't believe any of us have any shelf sets. A shelf set's really nice. I'll show you how to make one of those because it's somewhere where we can um, put the work that we're working on before we actually commit it to the base code. So it's really nice if we need to do some collaboration or anything, or maybe we want to test with some stuff. We want to save it somewhere before and not actually push it on and such. So that's really nice. That's the most what I'm going to say about Visual Studio Online. Um, I'll make a second video really quick about Visual Studio itself and how it works with some of this. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, though, let me know.